Hello and welcome to our online worship at Living Water Lutheran Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. If you'd like to follow along with the worship, you can download a worship guide on our website. Also, if you'd like to join in communion, please uh, gather some bread and some wine or juice so you can join us in communion. On Christmas Eve, we will have drive-in worship services at 6, 7, 8, and 9 p.m. We will also have an online worship service for those who wish to stay home. For our family Sunday school this week, we have a very special um, Christmas program that our children of Living Water have prepared. So we hope that you will tune in for that. Let us begin our worship. Oh, 
Today we light four candles. The first candle is the light of hope, granting strength to the weary. The second candle is the light of peace that surpasses our understanding. The third candle is the light of joy that touches the depths of our soul. The fourth candle reminds us of the light of God's love poured out in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament from 2 Samuel. Instead of David building a house or a temple for God, God promises to establish David's house or dynasty forever. Centuries later, after the Babylonian exile, no king sat on the throne. Even then, however, the people of Israel remembered this promise and continued to hope for a king, the Messiah, God's anointed. From 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, beginning with verse 1. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul closes his letter to the Romans by praising God because in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
God has revealed the promised divine plan of salvation for all humanity. Paul proclaims this gospel of Christ in order to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. From Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be for me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our world, there are a myriad of quotes. Quotes that have been made famous throughout history by either being written down or being spoken by someone in a speech, or simply being found on television or in the movies. There are all kinds of different quotes. And these quotes are ones that are so memorable that you only need to say a portion of it that most of us then can actually finish the rest of it. For instance, we'll go biblical first. In the beginning. Four score and seven years ago, we the people. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I came, I saw, I conquered. To be or not to be, that is the question. Ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Frankly, my dear, I don't give up. Love your neighbor as yourself. The only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Now that last one could have been a quote from the angel Gabriel. Because it was what she said, what the angel said to Mary. Do not be afraid. In other versions, we have just a simple phrase of fear not. But in either way, there are words of assurance that are given to Mary. Words of assurance that this crazy thing that's about to take place in her life is going to be okay. But after all, what would a little girl being pregnant out of wedlock be a problem. Well, her fiance, Joseph, would be well within his rights to ditch her. 
There's the possibility that her family would ostracize her and throw her out of the house. Another real possibility is the people of her town could get together and stone her to death. And the very best of all these gruesome possibilities is the fact that she would just simply be abandoned and ignored, forced to raise a child all by herself. What's there to fear? Fear not, Mary. Certainly words of assurance that she needed to hear. And a word of assurance that I think we too still find ourselves needing to hear. So what is there to be afraid of? Well, we've created long, long lists of things that we could be afraid of. I personally have things that cause me fear. My very child, earliest childhood memory was being at a beach on a lake with my mother. My father was up the hill helping a friend of his build a cabin. And while my mother laid on the beach reading, I was playing near the shoreline in the water. And at one point, I stepped into the water. And I stepped off of a small ledge, which for a three-year-old boy wasn't small at all. It was such a ledge that I fell down under the water. And it was that near drowning experience that I think set within me a really solid sense of fear of the water. It's not that I didn't enjoy playing in the water, but there was no way I was going to go into water that was over my chin. My parents tried. We had a myriad of different swimming lessons. I can remember taking swimming lessons when I was off at summer camp, taking swimming lessons at the local high school, taking swimming lessons at the Y. And finally, after all these years and years of unsuccessfully trying to teach me how to swim, the last instructor looked at me and said, well, you know, part of your problem is you have the buoyancy of a rock. They would lay me out on my back. They would hold me in place to be able to teach me to float on my back. They'd get my position exactly the way it needed to be. And as soon as those hands left my body, my body just sank. And it wasn't that I wasn't in the correct position. It was that I have, apparently, the buoyancy of a rock. Which may explain to some of you a lot of what goes on in my head. The rockiest part of all. And so I have a fear of water. I've since learned to be able to go in over my head and to be able to swim, but I still have a very healthy respect of water and I don't feel at ease when I'm in an area where I can't see the bottom. It just doesn't make me feel very good at all. But we all have our fears. We all have those things that cause us unease. And if you don't believe me, think about the things that wake you up or keep you up at night. The things that you worry about, the things that you fret about, the things that you wonder about, those are the things that cause us fear. For some, it may be finances. For others, it may be a situation going on in the family. There are people afraid of spiders and snakes, lions and tigers or bears. Oh my! But there's all kinds of other things that cause us fear. Things that don't allow us to feel comfortable within our own skin, within our own shoes. Things that make us wonder exactly what the outcome might be. Things that cause us unease. We worry about our children, our spouses, family, and friends. We worry about situations, our jobs, our retirement income. We worry about the political situation within the country. We worry about all kinds of different things. And within all of those things, God speaks to us as he did to Mary through the angel Gabriel. Fear not. Fear not, for all will be well. 
Now, a definition of well may not be what you expect, may not be what you want, but nonetheless, the promise of God's presence in our lives leads us to that point of understanding that all truly will be well. We live in days of fear. Fear of what might happen through the COVID experience within our lives. Fear is how it may touch family and friends. Fear to be able to go out and touch surfaces or be around people we don't know. Fear of living in isolation and what that has done to us and continues to do to us. Fear of all kinds of different aspects of what's going on in these days of COVID. And yet even there, God says, fear not. For it is God's presence that is with us. It is God's presence that has leaded us. It is God who gives us what we need to be able to get through these days. Helping us to understand what it is we battle. Helping us to understand what it is we need to do to keep ourselves, our family, and our friends safe. Fear not. Simply live in the love and the words of the Lord. Understanding that no matter what might come down the track, there is nothing that we have to fear. For the presence of God is there with us, guiding us and leading us and protecting us. As long as we open our hearts and our minds to that which God offers, we can truly embrace fearing not. For what Gabriel shared with Mary, Gabriel shares with us now. The lives that we lead, the challenges that we face, the situations within our worlds, to all of those, God offers to us, simply, fear not. Amen. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all you cry out to. To all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. We pray today especially for Lyle, Becky, Cy, Luce, Judy, Ben, Christy, Victoria, Audrey, Vicky, Louise, Margot, Joy, Lourdes, Michelle, Laura Lee, Barbara, Jennifer, Gloria, Sharon, Catherine, Alan, Michael, JJ, Ellen, Sharon, Anne, John, Christine, Daryl, Richard, Kathy, Ruth, James, Gil, Lou. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we would normally receive the offering, so we want to say a special word of thanks to all of you, all of you who have given gener generously of your time, talents, and treasures. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for all in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With our Lord's disciples of every time and place, let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our ki- thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. At this time, you may take the elements you have with you, saying these words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love and the unexpected spirit. Give your journey, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.